For this micro lecture, we're going to uh, kind of define what a watershed is and go over certain terms and specifics of hydrology and the impacts that forced activities have on the hydrology uh, of watersheds. Um, a watershed is basically the, an area of land that uh, drains water sediment and any dissolved materials uh, two streams into a common outlet at some point along a stream channel. Um, if you think about the mountains, it's easy to, uh, to determine what a watershed is. Watershed is. It's basically take the highest uh, area of ridges and uh, everything that, every drop of rain that falls on one side of the ridge is going to drain into one watershed and everything that falls onto the other side of the ridge is going to drain into another one. And you can see that kind of from the diagram here. Um, any rivers, lakes, stream, estuary, or wetland, and even as far down as the ocean would be considered uh, uh, you know, water bodies leading to uh, or contributing to the, the watershed. And as you can guess, humans have had a major impact on watersheds. Uh, watersheds make up a larger part of the hydrologic cycle uh, where rain in the form of precipitation falls on the ground or falls on, in the case of forests, forested land. Uh, which is either picked up uh, by the trees through uh, through a process called interception, where trees actually you know intercept the water that's that's fallen or falling on the ground, is filtered into the soil or passes over land, uh, hitting a stream and eventually draining into a lake, a river, an estuary, or an ocean where uh, it is you know evaporated once again uh, into uh, into the atmosphere to end up as uh, pre precipitation or rain again, or ending up in the ocean. There are a number of different human impacts on the water sh on watersheds uh, that we've affected through a number of different processes, through development, through uh, alteration of, of stream and hydrologic cycles. Uh, two terms that you hear these days uh, when discussing water issues are point and non-point source pollution. And it's important that you understand the difference between the two. Uh, point source pollution is uh, a type of, of, of pollution where you know where the source is. Uh, a straight pipe from a factory into a stream or a, a, um, a dump truck that is uh, tipped over and you know where pollutants are entering a, a stream from that dump truck. Those are identifiable uh, points where pollution is, is entering the water stream or entering the watershed. Uh, Non-point source pollution is harder to track down and harder to pinpoint where it comes from. It comes from uh, you know those little drops of gasoline that fall out of your car onto the pavement and then enter the watershed after a rainstorm. Uh, Non-point source pollution is um, is construction material or uh, erosion from construction sites that is entering the watershed through creeks and streams after major rain events. Um, Stormwater runoff then would be considered uh, non-point source pollution because every you know. Uh, rain that falls uh, in areas that picks up pollutants and, and carries them into the watershed. You can't really necessarily de determine where exactly uh, these sources of pollution are coming from and that's what non-point uh, source pollution is. Uh, logging and forestry activities impact uh, watershed qualities in the hydrologic cycle in a number of different ways. Uh, you know, especially as this, as this particular picture shows, it disrupts the transpiration of water that, that trees take up from an area and interception, the, the rainfall uh, is not captured anymore by the forested area which is which has been removed so therefore the water has to go someplace else. <coughs> Best management practices are or BMPs as they're commonly referred are ways to uh, ameliorate or make better the situation caused by uh, logging Im impacts that lead to uh, lead to erosion and increased sediment loads in the streams. Best management practices could include uh, installing silt fences to keep sediment from running into uh, running into the watershed, or leaving buffers uh, instead of harvesting all the way up to the to a stream bank. Um, best management practices include leaving a, a a strip or a band of forest to serve as as a filter for sediments that might. Uh, enter the watershed um, after a logging activity, or sometimes the planting of uh, of a particular crop or uh, uh, or or tree in a particular area is another way uh, or another best management practice, um, which you know, preserves soil and water resources while being practical and profitable for the land use activity that's taking place on the particular piece of land. 
Streamside management zones, also known as SMZs, are uh, uh, is a type of, of best management practice. And similar to a conservation buffer, it's actually leaving a strip of land adjacent to water uh, to protect water resources from forestry operations. There are a number of, uh, of volunt uh, voluntary uh, best management practices, one of which uh, includes stream the leaving of streamside management zones. Here in western North Carolina in the mountains, the amount of space that foresters leave uh, can increase due to the presence of, of trout in particular waters. Um, sometimes a streamside management zone might be leaving 50 feet on either side of the stream or in sensitive waters leaving, uh, leaving up to 150 feet on either side of the stream. And if you've ever walked through, through the woods and come across some of these zones, sometimes they are marked off by uh, flagging, but it's uh, made very clear that, that those are areas aren't to be disturbed uh, so as you know, not to, desert, uh, not to uh, impact the stream. Streamside management zones serve as, uh, serve as a filter. They keep, um, uh, keep nutrient loads from, from fertilizing, for example, or for, from harvesting uh, the sediment that tends to end up in streams after harvesting from ending up uh, in the stream. It allows water to soak into the ground like a sponge. Uh, by slowing down um, uh, water, it, you know, when, when, when uh, after a rain, when, uh, when runoff hits a forested area, hits an area with a lot of, a lot of roots, uh, those roots and the, the, um, the forest floor, the humus layer, and the organic material act like a sponge and help reduce um, uh, levels in streams and, and actually replenish the groundwater by slowing it down. SMZs also uh, help stabilize stream banks and, and lake shores. Um, you know, roots hold, hold soil together and make it difficult for uh, for wave action or other runoff to wash the soil away. Uh, plants also reduce the impact of raindrops on exposed soil. You wouldn't think about it, but but you know, individual raindrops hitting bare soil uh, cause uh, enormous amounts of, of, of erosion. And here, especially in the mountains of, of western North Carolina and, and uh, in the western states as well, um, plants and trees along stream banks uh, help shade streams which keep uh, water temperature down which is especially important for uh, cold water fish species such as trout which require uh, cool streams in order to uh, to, to reproduce and, and thrive. Um, one of the problems with the hemlock woolly adelgid that uh, is killing hemlocks in the mountain counties, uh, hemlocks happen to be major components of the, of the stream side uh, forest systems and, and folks are really worried that, that if these uh, if these trees begin to disappear, that uh, you know, water temperatures might increase and might reduce uh, trout populations in the Appalachians.